Most of the time in forestry, when we talk about thinning, we're talking about silviculture related to some sort of softwood stand, spruce, fir, pine, something like that. But can you also thin hardwoods? Yes, absolutely. Should you thin hardwoods? Yeah, absolutely, it's a great tool for maximizing value. But if utilized improperly, it can actually destroy the value of your hardwoods more than probably anything else. That's because a lot of hardwood species are managed on the basis of quality. Now, if you've read my book, How to Read Your Forest, which you can get for free following the link in the description and comments below, uh, I generally break down forest practices into two categories. You have qualitative management and quantitative management. Quantitative management is all about maximizing growth per acre or growth per tree, something like that. This is the goal of most softwood silvicultural regimes, precisely because softwood, most of the time, is sold purely on the basis of volume or weight. And so thinning is most often paired with softwood because that's what thinning is really great at doing, maximizing growth. The entire purpose of thinning is to manage crowns. It's about eliminating competition, preventing branches from shading each other out and thus maximizing photosynthetic material. That photosynthetic material, the foliage, is what powers growth. So if you maximize photosynthetic material on an acre, you're going to maximize growth. Now thinning has other benefits, of course, like shifting species composition, but at its core, the goal of thinning is to maximize foliage. So why is that a problem with hardwoods? Well, because even though hardwoods also need foliage to grow, branchiness is detrimental to the value of the tree. So what I actually have here to show you is a photographic guide to defect indicators in sugar maple. And this one is a bit older, it was published in 1970. But the good thing about trees is they don't change very quickly. So anything published in the last 100,000 years or so should be pretty accurate. And if we look inside, we can see examples of knots and the impact that has to the internal quality of the wood. And we can see similar effects with unsound knots, which are, are knots with a little bit of raw introduced and overgrown knots. So these are knots that have been pruned either naturally or uh, manually. And we have epicormic branching, which are branches that come from an otherwise sound bowl after it has been exposed to sunlight. And that's a much uh, smaller defect, but it's a defect nonetheless. So when we're growing these quality hardwoods like sugar maple, we absolutely don't wanna see these overgrown knots and seams and bumps like this tree. We want a nice, clean, straight bowl like this tree right here. So how do we get a stem like this? Well, we need shade and a lot of it because branches are developed as a result of exposure to sunlight. How do we get shade? Well, competition, high counts of trees per acre. The problem with high competition is it slows down growth. And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid by thinning, which is going to promote branchiness. So how do we get around this? The answer is, it is all about timing. What we absolutely need early in the tree's life is high stem counts, a high degree of competition to keep it growing up and to prevent it from growing out. But there's certainly a, a diminishing return to that benefit. The vast majority of value in a tree is going to be in the first 20 feet of the stem. So once we have a nice, clean, straight 20 foot bowl stem, that's when we can thin. That's when we can shift our focus to, uh, from promoting the value of the tree to promoting the growth of the valuable stems. But even if we absolutely nail the timing, we still have to be cautious implementing the thinning. We can't open up the stand too much, for example, otherwise we then might get epicormic branching. Um, we have to be careful with the type of thinning regime we select. There are different types of thinning. There's low thinning, crown thinning, um, systematic thinning and free thinning. And we want something that's going to select trees, select crop trees, which is uh, leave trees on the basis of their quality and propensity to produce value. And so we're probably gonna want something like a free thinning. And we also have to be careful with the selection of the logging system itself because residual stem damage can also be detrimental to value. Uh, that would be root damage, uh, damage to uh, the, the stem itself, damage to the crowns and so forth. And there are certain types of logging systems that are going to be or have more propensity to cause this damage than others. When we're talking about thinning quality hardwoods, I think 100% of the time, the smaller the equipment, the better. So should you thin hardwoods? Yeah, absolutely, but you should do it mindfully. But if you wanna learn more about thinning and silviculture in general, I do have a silviculture course available to premium silvicultural members. Uh, and if you're not interested, then the community of silvicultural is free. So uh, go ahead and check that out. I'd love to see you there. That's all for now, guys. I'll catch you later.